Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome back to another session of our series, Morning Reflections on the 99 Names of Allah. Inshallah, today we'll be covering four names of Allah, of al Hay, Al-Qayyum, Al-Hamid, and Al-Majid, names that have the meanings of living, sustaining, praise, as well as glory. Uh, so inshallah, to begin, um, there's a verse in the Quran where we start with living and this aspect of living and sustenance uh, that, that lifts up um, and all faces will be humbled for the ever living, uh, Al Hay, the sustainer of existence, Al Qayyum, and he will have failed, he will have failed uh, who carries injustice. And so Ibn Al Qayyim, Imam Ibn Al Qayyim, said that uh, all the names of Allah relate to the two names of Al Hay, Al Qayyum, the living and the sustainer, because Al Hay uh, comes from the Arabic root, which means life. Uh, refers to Allah's essential attributes that Allah is all seeing, all hearing, uh, that Allah does what Allah wills, uh, Allah is most capable and most able, and so on and so forth. And all of these are related to the aspect of life, uh, and that Allah is the ever-living who does not die, that Allah was there before anything else, and Allah will remain uh, when everything is gone, that there's no life before Allah and no life without Allah. And so when we call on Allah as al Hay, we recognize Allah as not just the God over life in general or the one whom we worship, but Allah as the source of life, Allah as uh, the source of all perfect qualities and the source of our very sustenance, um, as we discuss here with al Qayyum, uh, which is an intense form of its uh, of the root uh, of Qayyum, of the uh, uh, Qaf, Wa'u, uh, and meme, and it means to stand up uh, or to stand aright, and thus Allah is the one to whom all things are eternally managed aright, that all things are uh, made straight in a sense. And so this name refers to his actions and self-subsistence and the one who gave us the means for our own subsistence, whether that's our bodies, our faculties, um, our uh, rituals, how we worship to Allah, how we connect to Allah, uh, how we sustain ourselves, not just in the physical sense, not just in the emotional sense, but also in the spiritual sense. So think of this sustenance uh, and Allah continuing to provide in these ways. And so thus Allah is not only the source of all life, but he is in every single second of existence sustaining all of life. So Allah is not a disconnected God, not a disconnected creator that has created and let, that leaves and you know has, has no interest in what uh, Allah has created, but Allah in fact created, um, brought about this life from uh, his own aspect of al hay and now sustains it with a very vested interest in every uh, aspect of this world sustained in different ways as seen in the divine wisdom. And so this should teach us to trust in Allah because Allah is the, the one that is truly managing and taking care of this world above all else, that no one else is doing what Allah does and that uh, everything that happens, everything that is given, that is taken away, uh, ultimately it is uh, it, it, it falls into the realm of Allah to, uh, to be able to ask and to be able to uh, come back to in that sense. So uh, that trust that we build in Allah, that tawakkul ala Allah should be one that is grounded not just in, in fear, but in need uh, in, in this aspect of sustenance. And so we see uh, oftentimes these names, uh, what, what comes to mind uh, when, we, when we think of al-hayy al-qayyum, they're recited together, uh, especially in Ayatul Kursi, um, the most uh, kind of famous, but also the uh, the most significant um, and holy verse uh, of the Quran, among among many others, but the one that's absolutely lifted up uh, in the tradition, is lifted up as the well, the greatest uh, verse in the Quran uh, by the Prophet Sallallahu in, in some traditions. And so uh, Ayatul Kursi, in which it's uh, it relates that you know Allah, it starts with Allahu la ilaha illa hu al hayyul qayyum, and starts right with al hayy al qayyum. Um, and mentions these names, and from them you have dominion, from them you have sovereignty, you have preservation, you have knowledge, you have all of these things that start and emanate from these names. So it's no accident that uh, this verse that is the uh, really this pinnacle um, of the Quran, that's a, that's a highlight uh, of the Quran in a sense, and something very much that stands out, that it begins uh, in the description uh, of Allah by starting with these names of uh, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al hayyul qayyum, uh, and then from there tells us what, what all uh, falls under this or what comes from it and allows us to 
uh, extrapolate what further comes from these names. So uh, this name, as uh, these names actually, al hayy al-Qayyum, are considered by some scholars to be amongst the greatest of Allah's names, that from these names, as I mentioned, come so many others. Uh, and this is also uh, interesting that these names are related to uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi and to, uh, to Muslims throughout uh, history in, in times of the tradition, in times of uh, relief and in times of distress that uh, there, that Allah is called upon as al hayy al qayyum to bring about respite, to bring about relief from distress. And there's a famous prayer of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which he says uh, that uh, ya hayyul ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith uh, that, you know, provide uh, provide respite, provide mercy, um, provide relief. Um, o hayy, o qayyum, o living, o sustaining. Um, and so being able to see that these names and all other names of Allah being used in a way to not just know Allah as an attribute, but also to be able to relate to Allah in a connection sense. So how do we live these names? We hold on to Allah as a source of life. We, we know that it's not just this dependence on Allah as a theological basis, but to depend on Allah as a part and parcel as we depend on food in order to get through the day without being hungry, uh, in order to, uh, how we get, how we use uh, you know, take in oxygen in order to just sustain ourselves, how we see all these basic essentials, water to hydrate ourselves, how we rely on each of these things. Similarly, we should rely on Allah for our own sustenance, not just for some theological belief that satisfies us that, oh, we have a faith or we have a religion. No, we have uh, a God that we need to depend on in order to truly live in this life and in the next. Uh, so hold on to Allah as the source of life. Trust Allah uh, because from Allah comes all of things. Without Allah, there is nothing. And uh, just as something that might be helpful in relating to these names, uh, Ayatul Kursi is, is a very famous verse that we should all try and do our best to memorize and, and recite often. The Prophet lifted up uh, the importance of even reciting this verse, not just uh, before one goes to sleep, but right after the obligatory prayers uh, to just recite this and see the benefits that come about. But you depend that trust on Allah. When you recite it often, uh, you begin to see uh, how Allah is al hayy al qayyum to us individually. And now with respect to the names of Al-Hamid Al-Majid, uh, Allah is Al-Hamid, the one who is praised. And when referring to Allah, uh, this name also means the one who is worthy of all praise and the best type of praise. Uh, Al-Ghazali says that this name uh, comes down to the attributes of majesty, exaltation, and perfection as praise and perfect praise is one that involves recalling attributes of perfection of, of the highest order. Um, and Al-Majid is the one who is noble in essence, the one who is beautiful in action and bountiful in their gifts and favors uh, as Al-Ghazali has put it beautifully. Uh, Al-Hamid can refer to the quantity of attributes and goodness that Allah possesses. Uh, Al-Majid also refers to the uh, to the qualities um, that that uh, that are that are manifest as well. Al-Majid refers to the glorious and the great nature of these attributes. So you have the quantity of attributes and goodness that Allah possesses in Al-Hamid and Al-Majid can help provide uh, the uh, additional reference for the glorious and great nature of these attributes uh, that Allah truly possesses all those numerous attributes and the qualities that are glorious and uh, necessitate praise, but they're qualities of perfection and goodness. And uh, this praiseworthiness and uh, glorious uh, that state that Allah is, uh, is in all things, not just in certain respects that Allah is only praiseworthy. And when Allah, uh, when we see good things happen to us in life, uh, we know as Muslims that we're to say Alhamdulillah uh, to everything that comes in life, difficult or uh, in, in positive sense. So building that connection, but that there's praise due to Allah at every moment that's there and that Allah's glory is one that is manifest throughout. It doesn't diminish uh, in difficulty. It doesn't diminish in good times. It's one that is manifest throughout. Um, so we want to make sure that we show praise. Uh, Hamd is, a, is closely associated to the um, word of shukr, um, to the concept of shukr, which is thanks. So hamd, you know, being praised, but shukr being thankfulness or gratitude or um, this concept of thanks. Uh, but it, shukr, in, in this sense, it's limiting because hamd is the pinnacle of shukr. It is the best of the best um, that you are owed. And so this praise that is due uh, is not just one that's like, hey, you know, uh, good job, or like, you know, that that's really nice, or like, you know, pat on the back. Hamd is, is something that transcends that, that you can't really get from offering thanks. Uh, and it's a constant state of being, whereas thanks oftentimes may be a, uh, a, a response in sense, but this praise is one to be, uh, to 
transcend all of that and be throughout. So the name of Al Hamid is the one to whom we turn constantly to, with gratitude and humility. And through this name, Allah teaches us not just to be attached to the blessings that we get, that something good happens to us, Alhamdulillah, we just, we just associate it with that blessing, but to be attached to Allah's essence, because that way when we're attached to the essence, the good happens, the bad happens. At the end of the day, that connection with Allah still remains firm and strong and praise is still due to Allah, that Allah gives and we're thankful to uh, him as giver. Uh, and we're reminded of Allah in his glory, of his majd, of al-majid, um, but we are also cognizant that Allah, what Allah can give, Allah can also take away, and that all praise is due to Allah uh, in all manners there. And the Prophet ﷺ would often praise Allah despite the many hardships, despite having to bury all but one of his children, despite the uh, losses he faced in his life, despite all of these difficult trials that he faced, exile amongst all those things, he would give this praise. Uh, and especially in Salah, we talked about it yesterday that he would pray to the extent to where his feet would get swollen and his wife Aisha would be like, why are you praying this much? You're already the Prophet of Allah. You know what your fate is gonna be. And he said, shall I not be a grateful servant? Shall I not show um, gratitude? Uh, to Allah. And do we recognize in Salah that when we pray, we start with Alhamdulillah. We, we sometimes just roll it off the tongue because it's just the first thing we say, but do we recognize the significance when we say all praise is due to Allah? And when we put the world behind us of Allahu Akbar uh, and we say Alhamdulillah, I mean that everything is behind us and all praise is due to Allah, recognizing the impact and the significance of what we're saying. So we want to live with these names uh, by praising and glorifying Allah in all times, good and bad. Uh, we want to write down Allah's blessings for us, oftentimes in counseling sessions and uh, help sessions, uh, gratitude journals are really common and kind of seeing this in a sense, not just what are we grateful for, but attach that to Allah. What are we grateful that Allah has provided us today? Um, speaking well to the people, being good with people. Um, the Prophet lifted up that a person's faith is not upright until their heart is upright and their heart is not gonna be upright until their tongue is upright. So be mindful of how we treat other people. We wanna praise um, uh, you know, people, not to the level of Allah, but give praise, be, be gentle in our speech, be uplifting and positive in our speech. And then ultimately know that everything that comes to us comes by way of Allah. Do not get attached to the things that are here, the, 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 the distractions or the blessings that we may get, um, the worldly things, be attached to the one who has provided that. So praise Allah by using not just this attachment as an access to Allah, but praise Allah by also using that which has been provided in, recipro in reciprocity for Allah. So if Allah has given you certain things, use those uh, in Allah's cause, help other people, help uh, yourself, help your family, uh, do you use these gifts not beyond just your own confines. So inshallah, we conclude with that. We ask Allah to allow us to uh, enable within ourselves uh, this concept uh, and this recognition of Allah as Al-Hayy, Al-Qayyum, the living, the sustainer, and to continue to allow us to utter the praises that are due to Allah uh, of Al-Hamid and to allow us to see the manifest glory of Allah in Al-Majid in all things, uh, and especially within our own individual lives. We ask this all uh, in Allah, and inshallah, until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.